Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Megan and I'm documenting my second and final pregnancy. Today is my 38 week pregnancy update and I can't believe like we've made it to this point. I feel like everything has sort of culminated to getting to 38 weeks because for me 38 weeks is when like you know you're you're actually term in my book and you know anything can happen I feel like around this time is when I start to see a lot of women you know start seeing like labor symptoms and things like that so it's exciting so to jump right into the update today I will just talk about symptoms and I honestly don't really have much new to report other than the fact that my bump is starting to sink down into my pelvis. And he's not like engaged and fixed and staying down there. He's still popping back up, but um, I, I'm starting to see consistently that my bump is getting lower and lower. And I'm going to put up a picture right now from yesterday a comparison between 7 a.m. and 3 p.m. so only eight hours difference between these two pictures it was crazy how low this baby sunk into my pelvis so that felt every bit as uncomfortable as it looked um, I did feel like quite a bit of pressure and like anytime my the the baby moved I really felt it on my cervix um, so that was a little crazy but he's now back up and sort of in a normal position which I will show you guys later I basically just feel normal and I guess you know as normal as can be expected like I don't really have anything new or chaotic going on um, in my body or how I feel mentally physically spiritually etc it kind of makes me sad um, when I follow these due date groups on Facebook and pretty much anywhere Instagram and um, online forums where women get to like I don't know somewhere between 33 and 35 weeks and they they all just say they're done you know they're sick of being pregnant this and that and I get the ones who are like in serious pain or you know just going through a really crappy pregnancy I totally get that I would probably feel the same way I feel very lucky that I have normal pregnancies but a lot of them confess that they feel fine and stuff they're just very anxious to meet their baby and you know they're 35 36 weeks pregnant and they're already trying to induce um, themselves or like speed things along and that makes me so sad for the baby and for them like it's just there's so little time left <laughs> like just let it be I don't know I I don't know I just have too much of an appreciation for nature I guess and the anticipation of how it's all going to end like I don't know I I really I really enjoy it this whole uh, end of pregnancy situation. I find it to be terribly exciting. But I also felt the same way about the two week wait when I was trying to conceive. And I know a lot of women hate that time period too. They just want to rush it through and test and things like that. And I don't think I was ever that way either. Um, and I was never really a symptom spotter in my trying to conceive two week wait and I don't consider myself a symptom spotter like a labor symptom spotter in my end of pregnancy two week wait and that's kind of where we are right now and it's sort of fitting if you think about it that this journey would start with a two week wait and now it is ending with a two week wait but for me personally maybe some of the things I'm experiencing could be signs that labor is coming but I'm 38 weeks pregnant labor is coming <laughs> you know like my body is not a crystal ball and anything I go through right now means absolutely nothing so with all of that said um, a couple strange things I guess are like new things um, this past week were and this is TMI alert cervical fluid is 
very abundant right now and it's like this thin watery leucorrhea type um, cervical fluid similar to what I had in my two week wait uh, around the time I got a positive pregnancy test. It just feels like my body is starting to sort of flush out and lubricate and I don't know but I have not seen any of my mucus plug in it but I didn't lose that with my daughter until the day I went into labor with her so I don't I guess I don't really expect to see any of it. Um, I continue to have my normal Braxton Hicks, especially if I'm super stressed or if I'm super overworked <clears throat> physically. Um, and at night I continue to have menstrual-like cramps, not regular, not consistent, not timeable, varying in length and duration, um, and uh, like, not intensity because they're very mild. But there have been a couple times where it just sort of feels like my period's about to start. Um, and it's all just sort of in the front and kind of in the back. Um, my baby is still moving around wildly. He's corkscrewing around in my pelvis. He has continued to remain head down as far as I know, but he's just spinning around in circles because like in the morning I'll feel kicks on this side and then they're in the middle and then they're over here and then I feel like this butt bulge over here and then I feel it over here and it's just he's all over the place and I've given up trying to keep track of him. I just try to stay active. I try to do my stretches and my pose, my yoga poses and you know I practice good posture. I make sure to sleep in certain ways to encourage this cat hair all over the place right now to encourage um, good positioning um, and to make sure my pelvis is like open and balanced so he can find his way down but that's sort of like my gig right now. Um, tomorrow, Wednesday, I would have been, I will be, 38 plus 2. And that was supposed to be my last day at work before I started maternity leave. But I started it a day early because my daughter came down with a fever and so I'm home with her. She's napping right now. So today is my first official day of maternity leave. It's snowing outside and I have my sweet little baby girl at home who's just such a cuddle bug right now. So it's been a really nice day and I feel like it's going to be a really nice week. I'm just sort of like, I'm not feeling nesty anymore. Everything I do right now is sort of out of obligation because I just want to get it done. Not that I want to do it, like I've wanted to clean and organize and stuff throughout my pregnancy. <sighs> but, um, you know, I just did a deep clean of the kitchen this morning, and then I've got to do a deep clean of our bedroom slash nursery. Um, i got to clean the windows. The window sills over here are so gross and dusty. I've got, like, i really got to scrub the walls in here. They are gross. Like dirty toddler handprints all over the walls. Anyway, so I'm going to try to accomplish that today and then just trying to stay on top of laundry and, you know, I got to mop the floors and stuff. So that's sort of what my goal for this week is to just stay busy in the house, stay on top of all my chores and really just distract my body from the, pack, from the fact that it is so heavily pregnant because I refuse to have this baby before Christmas. <laughs> um, I just want to be able to have that holiday with my family. And it really, I don't know, for any of you out there who are the same gestation as me, who are totally over pregnancy and done with it, send me your like, um, extra days because <laughs> I kind of want to make it to 2019 so I would prefer to make it to 40 plus one before having this baby because um, it would be better for us to have a 2019 baby but I oh god this update is all over the place I can't really think of anything else to talk about um, I have a 24 7 pregnancy waddle it is here to stay. Um, I don't remember having it with my daughter. At this point in my pregnancy with my daughter, the most pronounced thing I remember experiencing is just horrible pain in my feet. I could not stand standing. Like my, my feet just couldn't take the weight. 
they were so just tired and by the end of the day I'd have to even shower in Crocs I could not shower barefoot I was crawling around on the floor to get into bed like my feet hurt so badly um, but this time my feet feel fine I have zero swelling but it's my pregnancy waddle like I have a legit waddle and I think it's just because my pelvis has opened up and loosened up and stuff like that so I do have pregnancy insomnia and I've just kind of resigned myself to having a 25% dose of Unisom every night I take a single pill and I like cut it up into four sometimes five pieces and I just take one piece so it's a very low dose that I'm taking and it's enough to help me fall back asleep when I wake up um, in the middle of the night, whether it's because of the dogs or the cats or my toddler or I have to pee or whatever. Um, I just feel like it's important at this point to stay rested and to stay strong for my toddler and for um, labor coming up. So I've tried like not taking it a couple nights and it's bad. Like I wake up at midnight and I don't fall back asleep until 5 a.m. It's not a good time. So I have that going for me. I have a little bit of heartburn. Um, not much. Oh, um, another thing that I think is a reason why I have the pregnancy waddle and my belly is starting to like drop a little is that I, I do think he is starting to sink into my pelvis. I'm able to breathe a lot better. I don't remember ever being out of breath this week. And I'm able to eat a lot more. I can't say I have an appetite but I'm just able to put down a lot more food. So that is happening, but I'm also super thirsty throughout the day. Um, and that's kind of new too. So it's been very easy for me to drink, um, which is nice. But that's sort of it for my 38 week update. I have my midwife appointment, my next midwife appointment on Tuesday, I think of, no, cause Tuesday's Christmas. When did we schedule my next midwife appointment? I think it's scheduled for Thursday of next week. So. And I don't honestly know what we're going to do with that appointment other than just the normal listen to the belly and stuff. There's not much more else to do. <sighs> but otherwise, I'm I'm just I'm just in relaxation mode. I everything I have been doing since the second trimester up until this point has been to prepare me for this moment where I can spend my last couple weeks just kicking back, enjoying the snow, enjoying the holiday season, having my tea, and just coasting. Um, I'm really, really excited. I'm so excited for everything to come, and I feel confident and very much at peace with everything that's going to happen. And it's not like a confidence where I feel like everything is going to go smoothly, or even remotely my way. Um, it's not a confidence that I'm going to have an easy baby or that I'm not gonna suffer from like postpartum depression like I did or that I'm not gonna suffer from breastfeeding issues. It's not, it's not that kind of thing. It's just sort of a confidence that I know everything is going to work out. I have prepared myself as best as I possibly can for this moment. I have lined up my support teams and my postpartum recovery stuff. I've done all my research on breastfeeding help and techniques and tricks, what to do, what not to do. So I feel like I am prepared and armed to tackle all kinds of scenarios. The only thing I'm not really like 100% prepared for is if I end up with a cesarean for whatever reason. I've researched like the things you should do um, to make sure it heals properly and the things you shouldn't do. And I've prepared myself for um, what to expect, um, but it's, it's the aftermath, it's recovering, and particularly it's the disability of having that wound that needs to heal and how that's going to impact my ease of breastfeeding and how I'm going to be able to interact with my toddler. I am terrified of a cesarean just for the simple fact that I'm going to have to be so, you know, with my toddler. Like, she loves to jump on me and 
this and like when she wants to snuggle me she wants to lay on top of me and I want to be able to give her that attention once the new baby comes and I just I just want to love on her so much and let her feel safe and comfortable and stable and everything and I'm not going to be able to do that in the way I want to if I get a cesarean and that is going to put me in a deep dark place so I am worried about that but the, th the fact that I've thought through those things and I know that it's a possibility I know it's a possibility I feel like I've at least gone 50% of the way to being okay with that outcome I just haven't really meditated through it <coughs> to get to a place of of like okay I'm okay with this I have thought myself through it it's going to be okay you know, these are the things I'm going to do to make sure that I feel like my needs are being met and my baby's daughter's needs are being met and my infant's needs are being met. I just haven't fully gotten there yet, but I'm working on it. Um, the final thing I want to say is that I've been considering more and more water birth. Um, after my last video, I had talked about how I had asked for it in my birth plan. It's not a guarantee because I, number one, need to make sure I get a room with a pool and number two, I need to make sure that I'm assigned a midwife who's comfortable doing water births. Those two things have to happen before I can even have one. But assuming that does happen, um, I would really like to labor in the water. I want to labor in the water, preferably the shower, but you know, also the tub. But I, I still don't know how I feel about giving birth in the water. I don't know how I feel about like stewing in the juices excuse me and like what if I poop in the water I've asked some of the due date groups online like has this happened to you guys and they're like oh yeah they just fish it out with a like fish scoop and but what if it's loose stools what if it's not that clean you know so that's like really gross and, and would kind of ruin the moment for me at least and then um and then the whole thought of having to get up out of the water to deliver the placenta I just want to like stay in one spot and do it all in one spot. So that's a turn off for me. But I can't, I can't like turn a blind eye to how many women say that it just feels so much better. It's so much more relaxing and like the pain relief and stuff of being in the water because the ring of fire blows. So if I could kind of like get through that in warm water and it helps me to relax and ease the baby out instead of just being like, oh, I gotta get the baby out and launch it out and tear and stuff. Maybe there's a benefit to that. So I'm going back and forth a little bit more about the idea of doing a water birth, even if in the moment I'm still hesitant. Um, maybe it would be a good idea to just do it anyway. I don't know. <clears throat> but this is all just assuming that everything goes as planned. So one can hope. Anyway, that is my 38 week pregnancy update. I will now show my belly. So let's get on the tippy toes. This is my belly from the front. And this is my belly from the side. You can see if I take down the pants, it's dropped. Um, when I'm just relaxing my stomach muscles and not talking, you can see how low it is. Um, and all of this area here, like you can see how I can press down, it's totally empty. Like the baby is all here. So this is just like dead space here. And my belly just like hangs super low down here. Um, but here it is from the front. And it's really not getting bigger anymore. It's just sort of changing shape, I think. And that makes some sense to me because, you know, like there's not much more, like I, the, the uterus isn't going to get any bigger and I'm not going to get any more fluid in it. The baby's just going to get bigger. So that is the kahuna. I don't know why I keep calling it kahuna. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me on this pregnancy journey. If you want to follow through to the end of my pregnancy and hear my birth story when it comes, like and subscribe. Otherwise, I will just see you guys some other time, okay? Bye.